This is breaking overnight. Country legend Kenny Rogers has passed away. Stephanie Elam looks back at the life and career of the man behind The Gambler and Lucille. You picked a fine time to leave me, Lucille. On a warm summer's evening, on a train bound for nowhere, met up with a gambler. We were both too tired to sleep. Do you really know about the complex and often tumultuous life that lay beneath the legendary career of Kenny Rogers, America's revered country music icon for over six decades? Beyond his remarkable musical journey, Rogers also made headlines for his intriguing history of love and marriage, having been married five times. But it's not a simple story of marital mastery. Amidst moments of happiness and romance, Kenny faced significant personal struggles that had a profound impact on his family and relationships. In this video, you will witness how his fifth wife opens up to reveal the untold truth about his life behind the scenes. Some stories will shock you. Years after his death, Kenny Rogers still stands as an iconic figure in American country music. His story is the perfect testament to the enduring power of musical storytelling. With a career spanning an impressive 65 years, Rogers not only left an indelible mark on the country music scene, but also etched his name into the annals of music history. His influence extends far beyond the boundaries of a single genre, resonating with diverse audiences worldwide. Kenny Rogers was more than just a musician. He was a storyteller, a philanthropist, and a cultural icon. It is through his own recollections and his wife's revelations that we can try to unravel the layers of his journey, from humble beginnings to international stardom, showcasing the profound impact he had on the music industry. Born on August 21, 1938, in Houston's Fourth Ward, Kenny Rogers was the fourth of eight children of Lucille Lois and Edward Floyd Rogers. Growing up in a neighborhood fraught with adversity, his family faced financial challenges that cast a shadow over his formative years. The San Felipe Courts, where Kenny's family lived, was a public housing project located in Houston, Texas. It was originally constructed for white families only. But during Kenny Rogers' upbringing, the neighborhood was marked by racial and economic tensions. Kenny's father was a carpenter and amateur musician, his mother juggled roles as an office cleaner and hospital worker. The duo worked tirelessly to make ends meet. Despite their financial struggles, the Rogers family found strength in their faith and a sense of community shared with neighbors. His siblings, acknowledging their humble beginnings, recounted the challenges of growing up poor. His brother Roy, for example, later reflected on their economic hardships, while his sister Sandy, recounted how the prevailing belief among the family kept them going through these difficulties. In this environment, music became an integral part of everyday life for the Rogers family. Surrounded by family, most of whom played instruments, Kenny became immersed in a musically inclined household. This created the perfect backdrop for melodies that would later shape his musical journey. Despite the challenging circumstances, the Rogers family remained committed to their faith. The tightly knit community laid the foundation for Kenny's resilience and enduring connection to his roots. Talking to People magazine, Wanda Rogers, Kenny's widow, shared the intimate details of a conversation that unfolded between the two before his passing in March 2020 and reflected on their life together. Kenny, with characteristic warmth and foresight, encouraged Wanda to embrace love once more after he was gone. Wanda, now 56, recalled Kenny's words. He acknowledged the transient nature of life, urging her to seek companionship and a full life when he passes on. Wanda, initially taken aback, humorously recounted her reaction, reflecting the genuine and tender nature of their connection. Beyond his concern for Wanda, Kenny had a broader vision for their family. He wanted their twin sons, Justin and Jordan, who recently graduated from high school, to understand that moving forward after the loss of a loved one is a natural part of life. Wanda is now navigating a new chapter. She disclosed that she is currently in a relationship 
crediting Kenny for imparting the wisdom that life should be embraced fully, even after profound loss. The openness with which Wanda shared this aspect of her life highlights Kenny's remarkable character. She even reflects on similarities between her new love and Kenny, particularly in qualities like leadership and positive energy. Despite the significant shoes to fill after being with an icon like Kenny Rogers, Wanda expressed that the transition has been surprisingly smooth. But it was a long road to get here, and Kenny's wisdom is in part the product of a life filled with challenges. Kenny Rogers' upbringing was marked by a profound sense of community amidst financial difficulties. The neighborhood, despite its challenges, fostered a tight-knit bond among residents, creating a support system that became pivotal in shaping Rogers' character. In the face of financial struggles, the Rogers family found solace in their shared experiences with neighbors who faced similar challenges. This sense of community became a cornerstone of Rogers' resilience, instilling in him values of compassion and mutual support that would echo throughout his life. Naturally, as his career flourished, Rogers remained committed to giving back to the community that stood by him during his early years. This commitment wasn't merely a philanthropic gesture, but a deep-seated recognition of the impact that communal support had on his journey. From contributing to locale schools to championing causes that addressed poverty and inequality, Rogers became a beacon of hope for a community that had played an instrumental role in shaping his identity and fostering his love for music. His success as a musician, however, was not served on a silver platter. Kenny Rogers faced formidable challenges in his pursuit of a music career. Rogers had a recording career spanning back to the 1950s. This youthful era witnessed him transitioning through various genres. He initially gained attention with a minor solo hit in 1957 called That Crazy Feeling, but he later faced a slowdown in sales. Prompted by this friction, Rogers joined the Bobby Doyle Three, a jazz group, recording for Columbia Records. The group disbanded in 1965, and Rogers began exploring the jazzy rock genre with a 1966 single, Here's That Rainy Day for Mercury Records, which didn't find success. He also worked as a producer, writer, and session musician for other artists, including country luminaries, Mickey Gilley and Eddie Arnold. In 1966, he joined the new Christy Minstrels as a singer and double bass player, but left seeking more success. A year later, Rogers, with some fellow performers, formed the first edition, later renamed Kenny Rogers and the First Edition. They achieved hits on both pop and country charts, including Just Dropped In and Ruby Don't Take Your Love to Town. A decade later, however, the first edition disbanded, Rogers then embarked on a solo career, signing with United Artists. However, he had trouble securing a record deal during his late 30s. The industry's youth-centric focus posed a significant barrier, but Rogers, undeterred, showcased a resilience that would define his journey. The turning point came when producer Larry Butler decided to partner with Rogers. Before becoming a successful producer, Larry Butler himself had a career as a musician. He was an accomplished keyboardist and played with various artists. Butler saw great promise in Kenny Rogers' voice and storytelling ability. This opened doors for a partnership between the two. This deal led to the release of his first solo album, Love Lifted Me, featuring minor hits like Love Lifted Me and While the Feeling's Good. The self-titled album, Kenny Rogers, released in 1976, included the solo hit Laura, However, it was the single Lucille in 1977 that catapulted Rogers to major success, reaching number one on the pop charts in 12 countries and selling over 5 million copies. This marked the beginning of a prolific solo career. Over the years, Rogers charted more than 60 top 40 hit singles, including two number ones, Lady, and the iconic duet Islands in the Stream. His music became synonymous with top-selling movie soundtracks, further cementing his legacy in the realms of both country and pop music. This success was followed by many more. His partnership led to chart-topping albums like The Gambler and hit singles like Coward of the County. 
Rodgers also explored duets with Dottie West, achieving success with songs like Every Time Two Fools Collide and What Are We Doing in Love. In the 1980s, he collaborated with Kim Carnes, Lionel Richie, and others, producing hits like Don't Fall in Love with a Dreamer. Rodgers continued his success into the 1990s and 2000s with hits like Buy Me a Rose. Despite pauses in recording, compilations like 42 Ultimate Hits and 21 Number Ones kept the stardom rolling. His enduring career also earned him accolades, including a Grammy Award for Best Country Collaboration with Vocals. In 2013, he was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame, marking the culmination of a remarkable career that spanned over six decades. Kenny Rogers' musical legacy made a profound impact on a global scale. The Gambler, one of Rogers' signature songs, transcended geographical boundaries to become a global phenomenon. Its universal themes of life's lessons and strategic decision-making resonated with audiences from diverse cultures, contributing to its widespread popularity. His music became a shared experience across different nations, whether it was the soulful balladry of Lady or the narrative richness of Coward of the County, his songs found resonance in the hearts of listeners worldwide. His distinctive voice, coupled with masterful storytelling, has solidified his legacy as a pivotal figure in the evolution of country music. Rogers' impact resides in the very fabric of country music. His ability to blend traditional country elements with contemporary sounds set a precedent for future artists, shaping the genre's trajectory. Even today, Kenny Rogers' unique vocal style and narrative prowess continue to resonate with new generations of artists. This perfectly reveals the timelessness of his contributions. His influence is not confined to an era, but spans across decades. The posthumous releases that emerged after Kenny Rogers' passing show how his musical legacy endured through unreleased works, collaborations, or tributes released in his memory. These posthumous contributions contribute to shaping and preserving Kenny Rogers' legacy in the collective memory of music enthusiasts worldwide. Looking back at his career, especially through compilations, it becomes obvious that Kenny Rogers' musical journey was marked by a fluidity that resonated with diverse audiences. The evolution of his musical style, experimentation, and pivotal moments contributed to the unique blend that became synonymous with his name. Beyond being a musical sensation, Kenny Rogers demonstrated a multifaceted artistic spirit that extended into various realms. His exploration of different avenues showcased not only his versatility, but also his enduring relevance in popular culture. Kenny Rogers ventured into acting alongside his successful music career. Rogers appeared in a variety of television movies and series. Notably, he starred in the title role of the 1982 movie The Gambler, based on his hit song of the same name. The film's success led to several sequels. Rogers also authored a New York Times best-selling memoir titled Luck or Something Like It, A Memoir. The memoir provides insights into the man behind the music and explores the experiences that shaped his remarkable journey. The book delves into the life of Kenny Rogers, beyond his public persona as a musical icon. As a musician, songwriter, performer, actor, writer, and influencer, Kenny's influence transcended his own era. The enduring appeal of his work served as a source of inspiration for contemporary artists who admired his unique blend of storytelling and musical prowess. Testimonials and acknowledgments from fellow musicians underscore Rogers' impact emphasizing not only the significance of his contributions, but also the lasting legacy he crafted across different artistic mediums. The extraordinary career of Kenny Rogers was shaped by many partnerships, collaborations, and friendships. But none stands as firm as the bond he had with Dolly Parton. Their connection went beyond the stage a genuine camaraderie rooted in shared experiences of challenging childhoods. 
Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton found solace and understanding in each other. Reflecting on this special bond in a recent interview with People, Dolly Parton fondly reminisced about the good old days. Parton expressed that she still misses him tremendously. Despite losing many dear people in her life in the last few years, Kenny's memory holds a special place in her heart. Parton shared some cherished memories of singing with Rogers, highlighting the special bond they shared during their performances together. One particularly notable moment was their rendition of Islands in the Stream, a chart-topping duet from 1983. Parton revealed that, unlike routine performances, she always looked forward to singing this song as it never failed to uplift the audience and bring joy. She went on to say that she never grew tired of Kenny's voice. Reflecting on their collaboration in 2013, where they recorded You Can't Make Old Friends, Parton shared her take on the importance of the song about friendship, especially in the aftermath of Roger's death. She explained that while new friends can feel like old friends, the depth of connection formed over the years is irreplaceable. Parton likened their relationship to that of siblings, stating that she and Kenny were very similar and knew each other inside and out. Despite his immense success as a country music icon, Kenny Rogers experienced a journey marked by personal struggles that shaped his life and career. Born in Houston, Texas during the Great Depression, Rogers faced financial challenges in his early years. Growing up in a low-income family, he witnessed the impact of economic difficulties on his parents and their struggles to make ends meet. One of the profound struggles in Roger's life was his father's battle with alcoholism. In a 2012 interview with Reuters, he revealed that he never drank in his life because he saw alcohol destroy his father and observed its detrimental effects on his colleagues. Unemployment during the Great Depression and post-World War EI era led many to turn to alcohol, and this went for Roger's father as well. He became a broken man, unable to support his family. This tragic experience deeply affected Roger's, and he expressed regret for not fully understanding his father's struggles before his passing. In his autobiography, Luck or Something Like It, Rogers shared details about his father's desperation for work. It was after his father's death that he discovered that his father had once driven to Galveston seeking a day's work, sleeping outside while waiting in line for job opportunities. This revelation made Rogers reevaluate his perception of his father, prompting him to question whether the drinking was an inherent issue or a response to the challenging times. Regardless, Rogers chose to avoid alcohol throughout his life. Rogers also received a warning from his brother-in-law Sonny, a drug addict, to stay away from drugs. He honored this promise. While he admitted to trying marijuana once, he considered the experience more frightening than enjoyable. Despite the occasional experimentation with magic mushrooms, Rogers remained steadfast in his decision to never drink alcohol or do drugs. Kenny Rogers' life was a tapestry woven with struggles, and this shaped not only his personal story, but also left an indelible impact on the landscape of American music. But the struggles did not end there. Kenny Rogers' romantic journey was just as challenging as the rest of his life. The challenges and profound moments that defined his five marriages left an indelible mark on both his personality and career. His union with Janice Gordon was a youthful foray into matrimony marked by the struggles of a budding music career. The challenges of balancing ambition and commitment became evident when the two went separate ways. He married a succession of women after this marriage failed. Rogers tied the matrimonial knot with Jean Rogers, Margot Anderson, and Marianne Gordon. His union with the latter was the longest and, at times, tumultuous chapter of Kenny Rogers' romantic odyssey. As he reached the zenith of his career, the marriage faced the trials of fame. Despite enduring for over a decade, the pressures of stardom eventually took their toll, leading to a divorce. However, Rogers did not give up on love and met Wanda Miller. Their late-life love story defied expectations and showcased a different facet of Kenny Rogers. 
This marriage endured until his passing, offering a glimpse into a more settled and enduring companionship. In candid interviews, he shared his opinion regarding the impact of his driven and, at times, selfish past marriages. The emotional depths of the legendary musician were apparent when he explored the regrets, introspection, and lessons learned from the intricata dance between fame and personal relationships. He also faced contractual disputes, royalty battles, and the broader struggles many artists contend with in ensuring their creative contributions are justly rewarded. But he did shine through these challenges and lived a full life. Kenny Rogers' ambitious forays beyond the realms of music also captivated public attention. And this is best exemplified by his restaurant business venture, Kenny Rogers Roasters. In a bid to diversify his portfolio, he entered the restaurant business in 1991 with Kenny Rogers Roasters, a restaurant brand that wasn't just about food, but was a culinary journey instead. The restaurant gained distinction for its wood-fired rotisserie chicken. The menu, inspired by Rogers' southern roots, showcased a unique blend of flavors, giving patrons a taste of the legendary musician's personal touch. The concept behind Kenny Rogers Roasters was an extension of Rogers' multifaceted talent. It aimed to create a dining experience that resonated with his persona. The restaurant's theme was carefully crafted to align with Rogers' image, bringing together his love for music and Southern cuisine. The idea was not merely about serving food, but creating a harmonious blend of taste, ambiance, and celebrity influence. In its initial phase, Kenny Rogers Roasters enjoyed considerable success. The restaurant's marketing strategies, coupled with the appeal of its signature dishes, contributed to its popularity. Diners were drawn not only to the food, but also to the association with a beloved music icon. However, challenges emerged soon thereafter. Maintaining the initial momentum became a test, requiring strategic adaptations to evolving market dynamics and consumer preferences. The first restaurant opened in Coral Springs, Florida, with a focus on grilled chicken. Over the years, the menu expanded to include turkey, ribs, and various side dishes. The chain rapidly grew to over 350 restaurants worldwide, spanning Canada, Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. However, it faced competition from other roasted chicken chains and underwent legal challenges, including a lawsuit from Cluckers, which was later resolved through Kenny Rogers Roasters, acquiring a majority stake in Cluckers. Despite early success, the company faced financial difficulties leading to Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1998. Nathan's famous incorporation acquired Kenny Rogers Roasters in 1999, but the chain's presence dwindled in the U.S. By 2011, the last North American Kenny Rogers Roasters closed. However, the brand continued to thrive in Asia under the ownership of the Berjaya Group, with nearly 140 restaurants across the region and ongoing expansion efforts in Malaysia, the Philippines, and southern China. The culinary legacy of Kenny Rogers lives on. Kenny Rogers also extended his impact to become a compassionate philanthropist. The altruistic endeavors of the legendary artist offer a glimpse into a facet of Rogers that transcended the spotlight. His commitment to societal betterment ran parallel to his triumphs in the entertainment industry. A cornerstone of Rogers' philanthropy was his active support for the American Red Cross and its humanitarian efforts. Beyond financial contributions, he immersed himself in campaigns and events leveraging his influence to raise awareness and funds for disaster relief and community support. Rogers also had an association with the Muscular Dystrophy Association, illustrating his unwavering dedication to impactful causes. Whether through fundraising initiatives, public appeals, or personal involvement, Rogers left an enduring imprint on the association, showcasing a philanthropic commitment as harmonious as his musical legacy. Rogers' philanthropic ventures were woven into the fabric of his identity, 
his generosity resonated across communities, highlighting his belief in using his influence to uplift those facing adversity. From regions struck by disasters to ongoing community development, Rogers' philanthropy reached diverse corners of societal well-being. Kenny Rogers was not merely a musical icon, but also a compassionate figure devoted to enhancing lives. Fueling this impactful philanthropy was his enduring musical legacy and recognition as a prime icon of American entertainment. The remarkable trajectory of Kenny Rogers' 65-year musical odyssey is adorned with the glittering jewels of accolades and recognition. His illustrious career in the music industry began garnering recognition in the late 1970s. In 1977, he secured his first major awards, winning the Grammy for Best Male Country Vocal Performance with Lucille and earning several accolades at the Academy of Country Music Awards for the same song. The following year, in 1978, Rogers received the American Music Award for Favorite Single with Lucille, and was honored with the Country Music Association Awards for Vocal Duo of the Year with Dottie West. As his career soared, Rogers continued to accumulate prestigious awards. In 1979, he clinched the Grammy Award for Best Male Country Vocal Performance for The Gambler and dominated the Country Music Association Awards, securing Male Vocalist of the Year, Vocal Duo of the Year with Dottie West, and Album of the Year for The Gambler. The 1980s marked further triumphs for Rogers, including multiple wins at the American Music Awards, with distinctions like Favorite Country Album for The Gambler and Favorite Pop Rock Country Artist. In 1985, he received the American Music Award for Favorite Country Album for Eyes That See in the Dark. His enduring impact on the industry was recognized with inductions into the Texas Country Music Hall of Fame in 2017 and the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2013. Throughout his career, Kenny Rogers' journey of accolades reflects a remarkable trajectory of success and influence. As the final curtain descended on Kenny Rogers' illustrious career, the spotlight shifted towards a well-earned retirement. Rogers chose to gracefully step away from the limelight after several stunning years of musical excellence. He was motivated by a desire to orchestrate the rhythm of his life in harmony with a quieter, more personal melody. He wanted to spend more time with his children. His paternal instincts pulled him towards a quieter life, away from the relentless touring and performances. Leading to his retirement in 2015, Kenny Rogers embarked on his farewell tour, aptly named The Gambler's Last Deal, signaling his intention to retire. He announced that his final tour appearance would be on NBC's Today Show. The extensive tour covered various countries, including the United States, Australia, Scotland, Ireland, England, the Netherlands, and Switzerland. However, on April 5, 2018, Rogers canceled the remaining tour dates based on medical advice, citing a series of health challenges. His farewell tour culminated on October 25, 2017, at Nashville's Bridgestone Arena. This historic event featured a star-studded lineup of guest artists, including Linda Davis, Lionel Richie, Reba McIntyre, Dolly Parton, and many more. The concert became an emotional journey through Rogers' illustrious career, highlighted by Dolly Parton's touching rendition of I Will Always Love You, and their final performances of iconic duets, You Can't Make Old Friends and Islands in the Stream. And just like that, Kenny Rogers stepped out of the limelight. However, the moment was soured by an unauthorized release of footage from Kenny Rogers' farewell tour. The incident triggered a legal storm as the footage, presumably intended for private use, was distributed without permission. Kenny's estate has initiated legal action against Kelly Junkerman, a friend of the late singer, for producing the said unauthorized DVD capturing The Gambler's Farewell Tour. The estate alleges that Junkerman, despite an initial agreement with Rogers that the footage would be for personal use only, attempted to release a DVD titled Kenny Rogers' The Gambler's Last Deal. 
The lawsuit asserts that Junkermann consistently sought approval for the content but was repeatedly denied. Despite these refusals, he proceeded to negotiate a distribution deal. The estate claims that the contested DVD contains priceless and irreplaceable audio, video, photographic, and audio-visual content spanning Kenny Rogers' extensive career. Among the estate's concerns is potential confusion with its own authorized DVD of the final tour. The estate successfully blocked the release of Kelly's DVD, but the legal process incurred substantial costs, amounting to nearly $300,000. Following this, another lawsuit was filed to seek damages and an injunction to prevent the unauthorized DVD from being released. The estate emphasizes its commitment to preserving the legacy of Kenny Rogers and maintaining control over the quality and authenticity of materials associated with his farewell tour. In the twilight of his prolific career, Kenny Rogers engaged in profound reflections on mortality, weaving a tapestry of philosophical insights and heartfelt expressions that resonate far beyond the realms of country music. As he contemplated mortality, Rogers pondered about the enduring legacy he would leave behind. Through interviews and public discussions, Kenny Rogers offered glimpses into his profound understanding of life's transience. The wisdom imparted by Rogers provides a window into the mind of an artist who grappled with the inevitability of time and the immortality of his musical contributions, even though he himself was a mere mortal. As the curtain descended on his illustrious career, Kenny Rogers extended gratitude to his loyal fan base. Simultaneously, he picked apart the layers of emotions that marked the closing chapter of his musical odyssey. Rogers was facing health challenges at the time, including a battle with bladder cancer. Unfortunately, on March 20, 2020, the legendary country music singer passed away at the age of 81. His death was attributed to natural causes, and he spent his final moments under hospice care at his residence in Sandy Springs, Atlanta, Georgia. He was laid to rest at the Oakland Cemetery in Atlanta. His death marked the end of an era in the music world, leaving behind a rich and enduring contribution to the country music genre. Most notably, though, in the intimate moments before his passing, Rogers paused the remote while watching TV with his wife, Wanda. Struggling with illness for years, Rogers used this time to share a heartfelt desire for Wanda's future happiness. He gently conveyed, I'm not going to be here forever. I want you to be happy, encouraging her to embrace life beyond his presence. Wanda, initially taken aback, now reflects on the profoundness of his words, revealing, Kenny gave me his very best, and he wanted me to move on and be happy. In an exclusive interview with People magazine, Wanda Rogers, now 56, shares her journey of finding love again, guided by the profound support and encouragement bestowed by her late husband. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't miss this video you see on your screen right now. It's truly unbelievable.